All right, so again, an annual fund helps an organization go. A capital campaign, building, that sort of thing, will help your organization grow. And then uh, legacy giving will help, help it stay. So all those three components are very, very important uh, for your organization. And annual funds, again, I, my first experience with a nonprofit, we didn't have an annual fund. So I, was, uh, I had to learn quick. Uh, we started with a campaign not advised. Uh, and then we, after that, we, our campaign was successful. It was barely, but it was successful. Um, and then from that point on, we knew, okay, now that we've got this, uh, uh, all these, these, we've got identified our volunteers, we've identified some other donors, now we can start doing an annual fund. And it, it did start off a little bit small, but we had done a campaign, people who made three-year pledges, it didn't hurt so bad. So they realized, okay, I could probably be doing the same amount that we were doing for the pledges, um, and then that would be typically their annual gift. So I don't know if they've had another campaign. I've moved away, but if they have, I guarantee you that their their campaign giving has risen because typically, you know, you want the annual fund to stay and the capital the campaign to be above and beyond that. So to have a good base for your annual fund is going to be very important down the road with. Uh, your campaign giving and legacy giving. I like this definition of annual giving. If you've not heard, I'm going to read it actually. Uh, it's defined as the custom of making a yearly gift to an organization in which one has faith. It's a friendly, happy custom, a perennial reunion in spirit, a pulling of hope and good wishes by those who wish the institution well. So, as I said, when I was uh, involved in the campaign that we had, and I'm sure in, in annual funds it would be the same, that spirit of sitting down with someone, thanking them for past support, um, letting them know what your annual fund goals are, letting them know what your mission is, what you're all about, how could, they could be a part of it. Um, it's a very good process, and you're going to grow, uh, your donors will grow, um, you know, uh, as far as philanthropy, but also like I say, I, I really make good connections uh, through that process. And if you had told me that I would make friends ever asking for money, I would tell you you're crazy. But there is a, a process that you, you earn trust, you have this exchange, and it's, it's, it's a very good experience. So, um, what can the annual fund do? Well, first of all, like for us at Trinity, it created an awareness of the organization and, and of our objectives. And then we also built, built that consistency of people that constituency of people who are interested in helping. Um, just like if you don't ask, you won't get. People who are interested in volunteering, they may not know you need volunteers. This is an opportunity to identify those people um, to help in your organization, just like Patrick started helping over at uh, the children's home. Uh, and then it, you know, it can grow into lifelong donors. Sometimes it grows into an employee. You never know. Um, so it also, your annual fund, um, uh, you reiterate, reiterate your message each year. So, so you have your mission, you have your um, purpose in the forefront. You know, if people get something from your organization every year, and, and the more you do it and develop it, whether it's you're doing um, banquets or uh, mailings, um, whatever, it kind of becomes this thing that people look forward to every year. Um, it like, you know, it's good to have its own identity in a, in a sense as well. They know when it's coming and you know that it's going to grow each year so you're getting your your message out there uh, it starts it creates that pattern and that history that habit of giving so uh, it grows a base too so like for example i don't know what your i know some of you what your giving records look like what your donor base looks like um, but you want to be adding to that and with an annual fund you know identifying people and I'll tell you what, people go through organizations, especially in schools, you've got new families coming in. You've got, then, you know, you've got families going out, but you want to make sure you don't say goodbye, farewell, or we'll never see you again. You want to make sure that they're, they're still um, in your database, make sure that, they, that you reach out to those people. Um, annual fund, I know a lot of organizations I work with, it's very, um, it stands out, their, their banquet or their gala or whatever it might be. You know, so what, what's yours? What's your niche? What's your thing you do? And what, what is it you do well? Um, you know, maybe an event. Events aren't particularly 
a good way to raise money. But you raise the awareness, you raise um, uh, you know, friends, and, and people are, come in, have a good time, learn about you. So it's worth it. But that's not the only thing they're doing. Uh, that's just everybody, like Rob said earlier, everybody has a different motivation for giving. Um, so whether it's, you know, you're tugging at my heart strings and I feel like if I, if I don't give, I'm going to feel bad. <clears throat> that's okay, you know, that's, that's how I am. Um, so appeal to that. But. Katrina was my motivation. Mm -hmm. Wow. Because we were in Katrina. We lost everything yeah. and the mm -hmm. generosity of people that we didn't know from Texas and Louisiana and colleagues and yeah. and that made me from a tither of net to a tither of gross yeah. and now I'm just wanting to share share my love by giving. Right. And, well and it's a event. Exactly. Yeah. Me up. Same thing happened with me. My niece who's named after me, her name's Taylor Regina, my name's Regina. Uh, she um, when she was eighteen she had heart failure and was put on the heart transplant list. I wasn't even an organ donor. I don't know why. I just, I don't know. So when this happened, it was just like, whoa. You know, and she got a heart transplant when she was 18. She's 24 now. Um, and it's just raised my awareness. I give to um, um, the Organ Donation Center in North Carolina. So, and I, I'm always putting on Facebook and things like that to uh, make sure you're an organ donor. So make sure you're an organ donor. Because <laughs> it saves somebody I know. So it does, it does make a difference. If you have a personal story, it's even stronger than hearing other people's stories. Uh, but if you have empathy and you, you want to, to help people, then those stories help. Uh, and those stories can be put in mailings that you use in your annual fund. Uh, they can be in your um, your annual report. Uh, put them out there. And, you know, most of you probably have newsletters or magazines, that sort of thing. Um, so having some of these stories and having, and a lot of times you can't show the, the actual faces of the children or, or whatever, whoever's being affected, uh, but there's ways around that, as we know. So, uh, but I think that's really important. It's important for me. So I know that I'm not the only one. Um, let's see, uh, we're on page 11 now. Uh, these are some of the things that the annual fund cannot do. Uh, it's not gonna make you grow not going to make you stay. We have other other methods for that, other strategies for that. Um, it's not going to help you finance new buildings, uh, but if you each each annual fund that you have, you have to have some objective. You have to have your case for support. What are we raising money for and why is it needed? Um, but it can't build buildings. It can't make you, uh, help you uh, necessarily stay or, or grow. Um, so strategic planning for the annual fund. Okay, kind of what you're thinking here is people in your donor base or people that you're wanting to be donors, you want people to repeat their donation every year. You want them to actually upgrade it every year. Um, and then you want to also acquire new donors each year. So, you know, having them maintain their, their donation usually is pretty easy unless something happened in their family, which hopefully you're kind of keeping track of those things, you know. As someone in your organization who's a major donor, a donor at all, they had a death in their family, if they gone through something, if they sold their business and now they have a lot of money, you know, read the paper. Uh, just kind of be aware of those things. Uh, but, you know, these are the people that are, are going to probably make it break. Just like anything else, it's kind of that 20-80 rule. It's kind of the same thing in an annual fund as a capital campaign. However, there's a lot more, there's a lot more gifts in that small category. Uh, it probably equals kind of about the same as far as the, the, the money, but um, let's talk about the case for support for a minute because I've seen some great ones for annual fund, some that really catch your attention. I don't know if we have examples, but you know, I've seen the ones that come like in a, a lunch bag and this was for, I don't remember who, but it was for some uh, to feed the hungry, feed the poor, but it came in like a, a lunch bag. It was mailed out, which was really a cool idea, um, and inside had all the little a little uh, uh, your pledge card and that sort of thing. But make it something people aren't going to just toss, you know. That, I think that's really important. But your case statement needs to be, needs to have a letter from your administrator. Um, you want to look at your, focus on some of your donors. You know, why did they give? Do a little interview. Why did they give? Um, 
you want to have a list of your donors and sometimes people just want to do them alphabetically but I, I like the giving clubs you know, the giving clubs where you have different different um, categories of giving whether you have the platinum level at this level, whatever. Um, and there's a lot of different ways to do it. If that works for you, then I, I like that idea. Um, some organizations, it seems to be more of the religious organizations, sometimes would rather just have everybody's equal, everybody's the same, let's just put their names in there alphabetically. So, you know, whatever works for you. But I would say, even if donors, unless they want to be anonymous, you know, unless donors say, yeah, I don't want any recognition. Um, they, they do. Something you need they to find out up front, I guess. Typically when someone gets a gift, I don't know if you have it on your pledge card or whatever, <laughs> if that's an option. I don't want it to be a, a major option, but I want it to, you know, them to have that, that option if they want to be uh, listed as anonymous. Um, you know, it may sound like pledge card, how do how would you want your name mm -hmm. read? Because it may be they want to give it in memory of somebody or... Mm -hmm. So, um, make sure you have that option. Some people, the reason they don't want it, other people to know is privacy and then people will know why did you give to this organization you did give to this organization yeah so sometimes privacy is okay yeah sometimes privacy is okay that's true and if they want to be anonymous then that's okay but you know here I had an experience once with the other firm I worked with that there was this gentleman and we were working on a campaign it was for a private school and the gentleman had a lot of money and we'd seen his name on everything in the town um, and when we were going to approach him for a gift those who knew him said okay this is how he's going to play this he's going to say because we were going to do a naming opportunity he's going to say no 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 I'm not, I'm not I don't want that I don't want my name it's embarrassing don't do it don't do it don't do it he doesn't mean it <laughs> <laughs> just keep going you know politely uh, in the way that we phrase this too and you might want to remember this in recognition of your gift at that level, we would like to name this, you know. So it's not saying, you know, if you give us as much money, you get to name the bill and you're, you know. So it's a little bit of a wordplay. But, so we did, we, you know, a few times we were like, oh, well, we would love to put, you know, to acknowledge you for this gift. And after a few times of asking him, no, 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 he pulled out this little card that had the font and everything, how he wanted the, the name. <laughs> he was prepared. He was the right combination. Yeah, yeah. So you never know. Um, say, would you like it to be named after your mother? Yeah, yeah. I mean, exactly. There's a lot of ways. And that's the thing. Even in an annual fund, there is a certain amount of cultivation of getting to know someone, of some meetings. Especially, you know, these people who really can hit the long ball, people who can give the most, get those answers early on. So when you come to them with a proposal for, you know. For their annual fund and, and again a lot of this stuff also pertains to capital campaigns but in a smaller scale but you know you are going to know what their interests are you know you're going to know if they like naming opportunities you're going to know if they've maybe thought about a planned gift um, and you're going to know that and we're going to talk a lot about research probably this afternoon or tomorrow mm -hmm. um, some of that information you can get online everything's public information we use the service that kind of gathers all that together but they don't know that person you guys know these people you know hopefully you know them if you don't you need to know them if, if there's somebody you need to talk to um, so the combination of the data and the combination of, of the personal knowledge and personalities just like I was saying with that gentleman you I wouldn't find that out just by googling him that he really did want a naming opportunity but he was going to tell me 12 times that he didn't want one um, those are the kind of things that you know we have to look at as well as just the data so um, and we'll talk about research again uh, more later